Thanks for joining us for today's webinar. Today we're looking at the NDIS. We're going to be looking at some top tips and some questions and answers with Lauren Holder. And I'm Andrea Salmon. I'll be facilitating today's webinar. We start all our programs by acknowledging and paying respect to the traditional custodians, past, present and emerging on whose lands we meet today, no matter where we're dialing in from. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and the relationship of Aboriginal people to country, and we respect the cultural authority of the elders in each community. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Lauren Holder. Holden. Um, Lauren works in our Lidcombe office, and she's an NDIS support coordination manager. So she manages the program and the team of support coordinators. Lauren commenced with us at MSL as an NDIS support coordinator herself before moving on to being a team leader. And then she, more recently, she's the service delivery manager. And so in this role, Lauren continue, continually monitors and supports the team of support coordinators across our five New South Wales and ACT sites to provide an effective coordination of supports. Lauren holds qualifications in counselling, community services and disability, and she's worked within a ver varying levels of aged care, disability, and with children and young people. It's a fabulous role that Lauren has in supporting the NDIS team, because we really know how complex it can be to navigate the NDIS system. So it's great that we've got her on board today. Thanks, Lauren. I'm going to turn off my camera and let you turn on yours and let you lead us through today's program. Perfect. Thanks. All right. So let's get started. So what is the NDIS? When we look at the NDIS, we think of it as the biggest social reform and it's changing the way that supports are provided. They are purchased and then they are delivered. You as an individual are able to purchase that support and you are well able to organise who delivers it. So it's promoting choice and control and it's about the social and economic participation of yourself. It's holistic, it's not just one component of your life, it is bringing everything together so that you are able to control what is around you and how your life works. It's not means tested, so it doesn't matter how many homes you have, it doesn't matter if you have a CEO or an executive job, you have a disability and you are entitled to support. It doesn't matter if you have informal or don't have informal supports, your husband can be as involved as he would like. It does not mean that you will not get the NDIS. So it is, you need to be 65 or over and you need to satisfy residency. residency. Uh, requirements. So that is you need to have a permanent visa, you need to be a permanent resident, uh, you can be on a safe visa however it's depending on what that looks like and the reasons for it. So contact the NDIS if you are on a non-permanent uh, stay in, in New South Wales or any state. If you are from Tas uh, sorry, New Zealand and you have come to Australia you are eligible. Uh, you may, it is that you have an impairment, some kind of disability or condition, and it is likely to be permanent. So it is a lifelong impact on your tasks. All right, so these are the specific hot tips around uh, the NDIS and mostly for people with M MS, but it is for the NDIS. So when you look at when you are explaining how your MS or your disability impacts you, explain it on your worst day. So try to look on the day that you've been most impacted because those are the days that we're actually funding you for. It's not always all about today when you're able to go to the NDIS or you're able to make the call. Think about the days where you have put something off for next week. Think about the days where you've had to deal with something after 2 p.m. Your worst days, are the days that we're planning for. So don't forget them. Obviously, we don't want to relive them, but just put forward the days that you need to sleep in, the days that you're not able to leave the house because of any level of exhaustion, some kind of fatigue. It could be physical pain, or it could just be that you're actually not able to go out because you are immunocompromised. Don't forget about the level of impact holistically. So. The NDIS is, just, is not just for those that need it all day. 
every day. It's used to maintain or create some normal sense, a normal sense and highlight what your best days are. So what you want your life to be and how your life is now, they can, it can be assisted in you right now you're working. If the NDIS wasn't involved now or later down the track, would you be able to continue working? Can you sustain the life you have right now without the NDIS? If the answer is no, then you may need to look at one, if I'm not on the NDIS already, try and get on it, call MS Connect, do what you've got to do. But also have a think about, are you executing your plan to the maximum? So right now you're able to sustain what you've got going on, but you're also not using some funding you might not be seeing your physio as much, or you might not be having someone take you to or from work. You might not be having some cleaning or some gardening. Is cleaning getting you pooped? Is doing the gardening making you exhausted? Is that sustainable? Because right now is exactly what you wanna be. So to get the most out of your plan, you wanna make sure that you have clear goals and that you can easily identify the types of funding that would be linked to your goals. They're used to identify the funding requirements within your plan. So without a clear link, you may find that they, the NDIS, your goals matter a little less to the NDIS. With that being said, make sure that your goals matter to you. We want the NDIS to understand what they mean. We want them to be linked to funding, but we also want them to mean something to you. How many of you have been are currently on an NDIS plan? I'm not too sure, I expect a few. How many of you actually understand or care about your goal? A lot of people just put a goal out there because their support coordinator said it, or because their LAC said it, or their NDIS planner wrote a couple of words and said, oh, you wanna go on a holiday, don't you? Do you wanna go on a holiday? Is that what you actually want? Do you want someone in your house to help with gardening, with cleaning? Do you actually need someone to help you with food? Whatever you want it to be, make sure your goal is that. Don't just throw it away. Don't just do it because you have to do it. Put something in there that you care about. So this is a little more technical. Uh, I hope that a few of you have been told this one before. When you call the NDIA, prepare yourself. It is confronting for support coordinators to call as well. We can get a little swept off our feet. We might have a, a plant, someone on the, from the NDIA that sounds like they know what they're doing and they may have done some kind of NDIS work before, but it could also be that that person doesn't know what they're doing and that can really throw us through a loop. So when you call them, have what you need to talk about written down in front of you and make sure you address those reasons for calling. At the end of that call, before you hang up, ask for the reference number of that call. So that can be six digits. It refreshes every day. With that number, you can make sure, it actually makes sure that that call was recorded, that your notes were completely entered and it holds someone accountable for the information they gave you or you gave them. They will generally say, yeah, just hold on one second and then they will type their note. Most of the time, they don't type their note until after the phone call. So if you ask for that reference number, you can make sure you have that phone call recorded before you hang up, which means a lot less gets forgotten about. I don't know about you, but I forget after I hang up. Okay, so ask your local area coordinator or your NDIS planner for their email address or their number, probably both. You'll find out that later on, they may not be contactable without this. It is pretty hard to get these numbers later. So, some senior planners and local area coordinators will actually give you their number. They might even give you a card. It's, they are a bit of a, a shiny Pokemon, as I like to call them. But without asking for that information, you're generally not going to get it. If you can ask, then you can contact them later. Don't forget, it's not just you contacting them later. It is a point of contact for you. It's a point of contact for someone else you might know. It is a point of contact for your support coordinator or your friends or your family members if they need to contact the, the LAC or the planner about a component of your plan or of the future. So without this, again, you will need to contact the NDIS on their 1800 number. That is their national number or you'll have to call, you have to email them via their state email addresses and they are distributed to certain uh, offices within the state. But again, that can take a lot longer and also can then be passed on to someone else. 
So I can, there are a lot of people guilty of maintaining all of their, every single receipt, every single service agreement, and you should, you should absolutely keep it. But one of my old participants, uh, she had a lot of papers. It was uh, four years into the plan. Uh, there were quite a lot of reviews and we had done quite a lot together. It meant that she had too many pieces of paper and too many filing cabinets to actually sustain. So what we did instead is we got a support worker to take photos or scan all of the documents. We created a new email account specifically for the NDIS. So it was name.ndis at gmail.com. And through that, we were able to upload everything and we were able to look at it that way. If you need to upload anything for the NDIS, it may be good to just upload it straight to your NDIS portal. So that is the my portal through MyGov. In doing that, you don't need to keep all these physical copies. I know that we do have a history of not necessarily trusting the internet, but so long as you read your email, then it will not disappear. It may disappear in 10 years time, but I, I highly doubt it, unless you are overusing it and you have, need to delete something. Just read that email, once you sent yourself an email to your new email account, read it, put it in a folder, and then you're good. So if you can, if you can do it yourself, that's great. If you can't, then get someone else to help. Uh, our support work coordinators are happy to help find a new support worker to do it. Otherwise, you can check out Mabel uh, higher up or any real support worker should know how to do it. If you don't have a computer, you probably could do it through the library. There should be another way through even just your phone of taking photos. You can do a scan through an app. Okay, so your new plans. So for your plan reviews, we tend to let our support coordinators go through the plan review documents. So that could be the nine months outcomes report which uh, at, the end of your, at the end of your scheduled review, that is when we complete that. There could also be a review request, or it could be a change of circumstance or a review of a reviewable. Either way, someone's going to look at your NDIS plan. So think about what you want. What do you actually want? Because a support, co a support coordinator will ask for as much as they possibly can. There's things that we will have to say, sorry, that's probably not reasonable nor necessary, but a lot of it, is us guessing. And we want you to do as much of the planning as possible and we'll explain it. So even if you don't have a support coordinator, still have a think about what you actually need. So are you looking to increase your hours? If so, what to? It's not enough to just say, I'd like some more support. What do you want more support in? Be specific. It's in everyone's best interest to reduce interpretation. Interpretation is the devil. I think we've all had someone mishear what we've said. We've all had someone assume that we meant something else because we didn't explain it quite as much. So in my, in my long time with the NDIS, I've just learned to tell them exactly what I want. Tell them exactly what my participant wants. Just say it, but be as specific as you possibly can. So, Consider your next 12 months and what equipment you might need. That could be that your walking aid might not be moving as smoothly as it could be. It could be that your wheelchair, your wheelchair cushion isn't working quite as, it's not as cushiony as it could be. Uh, it could be that your AFO, you've had it for two years now. Will everything last another 16 months? Realistically, your plan is probably going to be 12 months. You'll need a review if in six, 16 months time you need a new one. So are you able to go 24 months or more without that, without that plan, without that uh, equipment in your plan? It could be that your plan is extended to a two year plan. They may even bring out a longer plan. You could have your, accidentally have your plan review happen through those check-in calls, which would bring us to the next slide of the NDIA currently completing check-in calls. So these are seeming like they're just a, a bit of a care package. The NDIS are calling and seeing how you're going. They ask how your plan is going and if you need anything. If you don't feel prepared for this call or what the outcome may be, you may be a little disappointed in the fact that that could potentially be your plan review. The planners will generally not call your support coordinator or tell them that that phone call happened at all. 
it would just be that you had a phone review when all you were asked was, how's everything going? Oh, good. That is a planned review. Unfortunately, the NDIS right now, while they are doing the right thing and checking on people, they aren't fully explaining that the long-term impact that that phone call, although very brief, can have. I know of someone that had a 10-minute phone call and they had their funding cut by a little bit, not a lot, not enough to be concerned about, but enough to notice. So if that's happening, just say, hey, sorry, what's the purpose of this phone call? Can I get my support coordinator to give you a call and we'll all call back together? Can I call it another time? Be prepared that that may be a played down. If it is played down, ask what the purpose of the call is. If they say just a check-in call, it may not just be a check-in call. Okay, so upon receiving your new NDIS plan, ask your planner or your local area coordinator for a breakdown of the supports that they're funded. They wrote the plan, they funded the supports. What did they fund? Compare it to what you asked for at your review and see if there's any areas you need to address because you want to get on a plan review as soon as possible if that's the case. Within three months, within three months of your plan being, your decision being made, which is the new plan, you need to, you can submit a review of a reviewable decision document. That means the NDIS need to address that as a matter of urgency, really. It means there's a problem with the plan. If there's a problem with the plan, they need to fix it. So they will review it. It doesn't guarantee that they will change their mind, but it does send it to a different team. So when looking for service providers like cleaners, take a look at their Facebook and their Google reviews. How many of us, how many of us have forgotten about Facebook and pages being on there? How many of us have forgotten about Google reviews? I can tell a lot about a company by how many people go out of their way to write negative feedback. Very rare do we get positive feedback. It is not something that people go out of their way for unless they are encouraged in some way. However, you will either see quite a lot of negative or very minimal anything. So I like to take a look at Facebook foremost because a lot of people do advertise through there, but on Google as well. So you can just type in the name and review and that will come up. If there's no reviews, that's fine. It means no one's gone out of their way to create a review page because you can do it on product review, you can do it on any website really. If you find that a company is, um, if you're looking at a new company and you wanna just check where their support staff are coming from, see if they're coming away, coming from afar from your home, they may be charging you for the distance that they're having to travel. But you also want to check, are they supplying their own items or are you expected to bring them? It can work out to be cheaper if the provider is closer and providing their own supports as well. So if they have their own bleach, if you use bleach, if they have their own mop and bucket, then you will save a lot more long term. However, there are support staff that are doing cleaning and they generally don't have that equipment. So there is a difference between using support staff and cleaners for cleaning. Uh, generally speaking, you'll have probably a better clean as well and you can probably trust them with the Dyson around the house. All right, so before you meet with a new health provider, even if it's just for a private information session, double check with your support coordinator or your LAC or even just your provider themselves if that meeting will incur a charge. Oftentimes, a meeting can be mistaken for a general chat. It could be about, say, eligibility for housing, but it's actually initial consultation fee. It can be that you are looking at your eligibility and you don't really know that you are. There are some companies out there that are quite well known that do this and don't inform you that that's actually the start of the whole process of applying, signing up and a whole bunch of fees. The fees are due. You will need to pay fees at some stage, especially for housing or any real NDIS supports. But that initial chat shouldn't incur a charge unless you are aware of it. So make sure you ask, will this chat be charged? Who is this with? How long will this take? So this could be, it's typical to have a charge for the initial consultation with support coordination, physiotherapy, exercise physiology, psychology, occupational therapy, and again, accommodation discussions. So 
generally speaking, that's short, that's a specialist disability accommodation. Short term and medium term accommodation generally don't have that kind of charge, they're just more of a chat. If any part of your NDIS plan doesn't make sense, ask. Alternatively, you may have find some of your information about in your about me doesn't actually make sense or doesn't look right or isn't true. It's meant to be your life. It's meant to represent you. So if it's not right, you can get that changed. Sometimes it may require your support coordinator's assistance because you may need to go a little bit too deep for something you shouldn't have to do. But if you are able to, just call the NDIS and ask if you can have this component changed. It may result in a plan review, but you do want your plan to represent you and be accurate and true. Again, your plan is meant to fit into your life. It's meant to work with you. So it shouldn't be too complex of a fit once you get it set up. If it's feeling wrong after the first six months, speak to your LAC, your planner or your support coordinator about your concerns and see if there's anything that can be done. Generally speaking, your plan should fit. It should make sense. It should be sustainable. It should work. It should cover what you need it to do. So if after six months it's really not, maybe it's not the plan for you. All right, so this one's scary for a lot of people. It's a, this is a bit of a myth buster. So if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Your funding. So with COVID, life and contingency plans in place, things change. While we definitely worry about overspending our funds, there's generally a mis common misconception that whatever you don't use, you'll never be funded again. Your plan was funded to meet that year's expectations and also have a contingency plan. So it has what you need and a little bit more. It has what you need at the time of the chat. That's what the reviews are for, to see what you need at the time of the next chat. So you may find, especially with COVID right now, that you may have some extra funding. It could be a lot, it could be a little. You were funded this amount at the time of that review. That does not mean that that review does not, the next review doesn't take into account COVID. Life happened, nothing happened, everything happened, life changed. You don't need to be stressed about your funding being reduced just because you were unable to use it. If you are worrying about where you can go or what you can do, you have a chat to your planner, your LAC or your support coordinator. We would much rather, and so would the NDIS, you not overspend your funding and go for trips into Broadway or go for a drive all the way out to Broken Hill for nothing. If you're over, if you're misusing your funding, that's incredibly different to underusing because of your circumstances. The NDIA will understand just explain what has, what has happened. And generally speaking, your LAC will already explain it for you or so will your support coordinator. So not everyone needs uh, access to your NDIS plan. A lot of support providers, physiotherapists, exercise physiologists, any component of your NDIS plan, a lot of them will say they need a copy of your plan. They do not need a copy of your plan. There is no reason that a cleaner needs to see what your capital, your equipment budget is. There's no reason that a physiotherapist needs to see how much transport funding you get. I don't see why they need to ask. The only people that should really have a copy of your plan are your plan managers, you, your nominee, and if you are comfortable, your support coordinator, but you do not need to give your support coordinator a full copy of your plan. If you have a component of your plan that is self-managed and a component that is agency managed, or if you just want help with your supports, that's fine. You do not need to send it to everybody. If you need to send components, it is just the goals. So you would only need to send everybody your NDIS goals. It then helps them to create a service agreement but it also helps them to understand what you actually want and what the NDIS is looking for. So they're able to help continually justify that funding for next year and so on and so on. So if you are being pressured into providing a copy of your plan, just take a screenshot of your about me, take a screenshot of your plan's goals, take a photo, a dodgy photo on your phone, do what you've got to do to show them only what they need to see. Don't do anything you're not comfortable with because you 
don't necessarily, again, need to have your physiotherapist. See how much money you have in your transport. And that's it from me. Um, do you have any questions? We do, Lauren. We certainly do. We get them up. And so that there's that reminder um, to call MS Connect. And we'll now spend some time looking at the questions that people have popped in. And again, if you just joined in and you're not familiar, the, the question panel is generally on the right hand side of your screen. You're looking for the tiny little orange box with the white arrow. That allows you to open up the control panel where you find a question heading. If you click on the little white triangle, that opens that up and you can type in your or if you are on an iPad type device or a Mac, maybe you might be looking for a question mark icon. So let's have a look what we've got here. A few have come in in readiness, which is really great. So in, in preparing for the NDIS and needing to prepare some allied health reports, their assessments include both what the person can and can do rather than simply their worst day. How, how will, might that affect their application, which is based on your worst day? What's your advice around allied health application um, reports? So your physiotherapist tends to not be too impactful in your day-to-day. -day. It would be more your occupational therapist that would have the, um, the overriding impact on what your day-to-day -day needs would be. Yeah, your OTs can tend to be a bit optimistic sometimes. Have a chat to your OT about it, but they will they will not always see you on your worst day because on your worst day, you're probably not able to see them. It is a tricky one, but your support statement, your impact statement of your own can have such great weight on this. Generally speaking, the NDIS, once you're on it, you don't have as much of a struggle about explaining your worst day because it will be in your about me section. I completely encourage an essay in your about me section. It is very impactful to take a look at a huge page. This is how I am day to day and this is what I'm like on a bad day. But your your OT tends to be a bit optimistic. They will They will talk to your limitations. If you can ask them to have a little bit more of a this is how I can be on bad days, do it. But I wouldn't be too concerned about how the allied health looks at it because they do look at your abilities and therefore what you're unable to do. If that, I hope that answers the question enough. Lauren, if, absolutely. If that allied health assessment comes through MS, through us, they, those physios, exercise physiologists and OTs are much more likely to have an understanding of the fluctuating nature of MS. And I believe that can be done by telehealth at the moment. Is that correct? Yeah, and FU is actually doing it from Lidcombe. Um, you can actually come into Lidcombe and have a physio. But yeah, we have um, Alexandra here at Lidcombe as well, as she was an OT. She's able to do it face to face as well. We're not doing complete heli -tel, uh, tele telehealth, but we are able to do that for anyone not in uh, New South Wales. But yeah, it. If you can ask for, they, they generally will yeah. give a bit of an explanation about your disability and what it looks like and how you experience it and what it actually is, not just for you. Because I mean, secondary can be quite different to primary. Um, so they can talk to it. If they haven't gone enough into your diagnosis or it, it could be MS, it could be something completely different, whatever it is, if they haven't gone enough into it, maybe just ask if they can shouldn't be too difficult and if they understand your condition then they should be able to write about it surely. So Julie's got a similar question um, she's had the NDIS for two years and at the moment basically uses it for home help once a week she hasn't had an OT would your advice be that she would need an OT assessment and where would she find one? Uh, I'm guessing Julie's looking for additional supports um, if you're not, that's fine as well. So if you're looking for something more, get an OT. I would always suggest getting an OT every couple of years anyway, just as a bit of a, a top up check. It really helps to have someone look at your functional, uh, do a functional assessment. So they look at how your life works. They might spend three hours with you and take a look at how does Lauren do Tuesdays? 
how does she get to work and take a look at you getting up out of bed take a look at how you would get into the shower or can you prepare your meals by yourself can you sustain your meals by yourself can you feed the dog is the house suitable doesn't necessarily mean anything has to change but it can help to identify where you may need a little bit more support and if one hour is enough then one hour is enough it doesn't have to change anything but yeah I would suggest having someone having an OT come out and have a look at you but it's not going to change the world you're already on the NDIS it's if you would like something to change within your plan then have someone take a look and do an assessment. Do you place that through your NDIS plan how would you pay for that assessment? Yes, so it's funded under your improved daily living funding. Uh, you, generally speaking, you would pay for it under so capacity building and then improved daily living. So you, if you are agency plan or self-managed, you are able to access any OT. Uh, if you are agency managed, a little bit more difficult, but you can go through the NDIS website and type through provider finder and type in occupational therapist. Uh, we again we have our occupational therapist in Lidcombe we have an occupational therapist or a couple of occupational therapists in Blackburn as well so we are able to do telehealth down in Melbourne but in New South Wales we can do face to face if you are anywhere else we can do telehealth as well it it can be a little confusing for people of how does someone see how I act most of the time uh, we we show people what we want them to see so if someone is asking you a question, it doesn't really matter if they are seeing you or not. The truth is in what you are saying. If you are standing tall, even though it's hurting every bone of your body and you are opening doors without an issue, even though it is exhausting, that doesn't mean that you are fine just because we can see it. Half of it is what you are telling us. So we can do it that way, but also we can see you physically through webcams or video even if it's you send a video of you walking or using something thank you um for someone who has friends and family what does that mean for funding for support workers is that likely to be it it depends on how your it depends on how your supports are in your life. Are they providing all of these? Are they providing showers? Are they providing cleaning? Can they keep providing that? The biggest question is, can they keep doing that? I suppose we have quite a few people in our lives that are used to helping us and we're used to helping them. It could be that that's not sustainable anymore. It could be that you actually just don't, you don't want it anymore. We shouldn't be, the NDIS shouldn't be relying on your partner or your friend or your mother or your children to look after you if you are unable to do it yourself mm. then speak to the ndia and see if they can assist in filling a component it shouldn't have an impact like you believe it does it can be quite daunting to sit with someone beside you mm. and have them hold your hand at a plan review and then ask the ndia for someone to hold the other that is a support, mm. but it doesn't mean they can do everything and it doesn't mean they should, but you need to be quite clear about the limitations of the people in your life and explain if they can, can't, or will not be able to in the future. That, that's great advice, Lauren, absolutely. Um, do you always have to upload to the portal you, uh, by agreement with the NDIS? So I'm going to guess, no. is that? No, you don't. You don't, but it, it is a good place to keep. Right, okay. Question around support coordination. If your support coordinator isn't doing what you want them to do, can you get rid of them? Absolutely, and get rid of them. How can you get rid of them? Get rid of them. Um, so send an email. Send them an email so it's in writing. Uh, tell them why. So it could be that it's that specific coordinator. It could be just the relationship. It could be also though that you aren't understanding a component of support coordination that is capacity building. A very large, and the intent of support coordination is actually to build your capacity. So you are able to be a, a coordinator of supports. So you're able to take over and support your entire plan on your own. 
that is the purpose of support coordination. So while I completely understand that there are some people who just don't get it, they just don't do it, there is there are gaps and there can be some personality clashes. There is also the component that does get a little frustrating for me where people do forget the purpose is to do ourselves out of a job. So we aren't meant to do all of it. We aren't meant to do everything. But again, there are components that support coordinators just don't do and they should be doing and they you have asked them to do and it is definitely within your rights and it's within our scope. If it is out of our scope, maybe just have a chat to their manager or their team leader. If it's me, if I'm the manager, chat to me. I am more than happy to explain it to you or I'm able to, happy to change the coordinator or look at what's going on. But have a think about is this person is this person ditching me or is this person actually just trying to build my capacity and I'm just not wanting to do it myself because we aren't meant to be permanent. We aren't meant to be forever. We probably will be, but we aren't meant to be forever with individuals. Thank you. And that's actually a key feature of the NDIS is that ability to find someone who meets your needs and is you get along with. So yeah. you, you're very right. You're able to change your providers. Yeah, if you want to, just send them an email. You can give them a call and say, hey, what's the process? But send an email, put it in writing. Hi, I'd like to change support coordinators. Can you tell me how to go about this? Yeah, that's great. Um, in having someone complete your application, does it matter if this comes from a GP or a neurologist? I'll probably get both. Um, you're, Depends how close you are with your GP. I would generally get my neurologist to assist just because they can have that extra depth to them. Um, if you're not able to get your neurologist, have a chat to your GP about how comfortable they feel. They are expected to fill out quite a lot of the questions, so I would, but I would have both if I was able to. If you aren't able to access your, your own neuro, don't stress, just put that weight on your GP. Great. Um, this this um, participant had an OT assessment in 2019 with some recommendations for cooling equipment and at the time didn't use the funding. If they now want to buy something that was recommended then, do they need another OT assessment? Ooh, it depends on if a few components. Is it st the same plan? So 2019, you could still be on your same plan. Um, if you aren't, if you're on a next plan, depends on how much it costs. So by cooling equipment, I assume we mean things like pads for the bed. Uh, we could mean pads for your wheelchair. We could mean bandanas or neck scarves. We could mean uh, cooling beanies or hats. Gosh, there's a million different things. Uh, we could mean the vest. Generally, I assume you mean the vest or the blanket. Uh, with those, if they are under $1,000, so you have that $1,500 typically in your NDIS plan, in your core supports and in daily adaptive or daily living funding. It's also known as consumables. So if you have that funding in there, it doesn't really matter. And so long as it's underneath $1,000 per item and underneath the $1,500, combined then you should be fine to get it. If you do have a question maybe give MS Connect a call. Um, just it, it is one of those areas where I know that people can be worried about doing the wrong thing and it's it's really great that you are worried about doing the wrong thing. It means you're generally doing the right thing. So give MS a call or speak to your LAC. It, you can just go straight to your LAC or your planner. You can even call the NDIA or if you're not a phone call person, you can go onto web chat on the NDIA's website. So go to ndis.gov.au, click contact us, and then go to web chat. So you can type in there and then you can have an actual transcript that you press save at the end of the call. And then you're able to keep it that way. So it may be more useful to go that way. So you have it in, you have it in writing from the NDIA that, yep, you can purchase that. That's great, great advice. Thanks, Lauren. Um, if you're rejected by the NDIA when you first applied. Um, okay, so if you have been denied access to the NDIS and you are unable to can submit a review of a reviewable decision to have the NDIS change their mind, 
then call MS Connect and we do have pre-planning which can include denial of access. Um, if you're not comfortable calling MS Connect, if it's not the people you want to call, call the NDIA and ask them. Put people on the spot. Don't be afraid to give people a call. They're the ones that know what they're doing. They're the, apparently, they're the ones that know how these processes work. Give them a call. But it would be best to call MS Connect if you have MS and we can help with how we would access the NDIS. But it would be a, it sounds like it would have to be another um, access. Yep, starting the process again. Thank you. Um, what about information on the new independent assessments and how these will affect relapsing remitting MS participants who have fluctuating impairment? We don't know enough about this, um, not yet. So right now, not enough. I, I wish that I knew enough to do a, I'm sure it will take a whole webinar, whole hour to do. I am not confident enough in how the process works yet because they haven't put enough information out there. So I can't say yes, I can't say no in how I feel. It's best if we leave that one there because it is such a big topic, but as they release more information, hopefully we can get more information out to everybody in this chat, everybody anywhere, and do some sort of education announcement because it is a big one. If you go to the NDIS website though, uh, there is an area on the functional capacity assessment and they have a frequently asked questions section. I'm checking it as often as I can, but they haven't released enough information for me to feel comfortable answering that question. I'm sorry, that was a really long winded, sorry, I can't answer your question. If you're interested in peer support to talk to other people about their experiences, even in the NDIS, get some advice and strategies specific for managing your symptoms and get your act together is a good one for that. And a reminder that we also have an employment support service that people can access alongside the NDIS. That's very important if you're in the workforce at all, I would strongly encourage you to connect. And as you know, we are a registered NDIS provider. And if you if you know someone who's over 65, we can actually help them navigate my aged care as well. We've got lots of podcasts for you to listen to, and I would encourage you to stay on the line when the webinar ends to answer a couple of questions about the webinar. Just a couple of things that have come in. Um, I won't, Janine, I won't ask your specific question, but in terms of builders and finding people that are reliable, what the Best advice for that, Lauren? Oops, sorry, what was the question again? Best advice for finding a reliable builder? Um, I would have a chat to the occupational therapist. Again, would that be your Google reviews? Yeah, they're, I mean, you, you're going to get a dodgy provider, a dodgy builder, or you're not. It doesn't really matter if they're NDIS registered or an NDIS provider, they're either dodgy or they're not. So I would check out reviews but I'd also rely pretty heavily on my occupational therapist um, or even just speak to an occupational therapist. They tend to have people they know and will have a good re working relationship with. If you don't have an OT, call local OTs, give them a call, just say hi, do you know anyone? Even if that costs you Excellent. maybe an hour of occupational therapy, just one service agreement for a little consultation, that is far greater than having your house half built and being in quite a situation. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you, Lauren, so much. I'm sorry that the audio seems to be mucking up towards the end here, but thank you so much for your time and your wisdom that you've shared. It's great advice no that you've been able to give through those top tips. I hope everyone's been madly jotting down ideas and things that they're going to follow up on. So thank you for your time and thank you everyone for being online today. And I'll double check any other questions. And if you feel that your question hasn't been answered, by all means, contact MS Connect and we will make sure you're connected to Lauren to get those answers. So thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, Lauren, as well. That's been wonderful. Yeah.